Hello everyone, my name is Stacy Stoop. I am the president and founder of the Sew Brova program and we are fortunate to be here in Sally's sewing room. Um, I have asked her to be a part of uh, this conversation for you guys out there who have um, maybe some questions or a little bit uncomfortable with the, the sewing journey and we want to fill in the gaps between what our workshops are providing um, and just familiarize you with the tools, some best practices, and hopefully um, get you sewing and have um, a lot of fun at the same time. Stay tuned and uh, we hope you enjoy the show. Well, in the Dear Sally series, I would hope that you will um, send me some questions of some of your sewing issues and problems. It's not a, a tutorial where you're going to uh, learn a lot and an enormous amount of information about the sewing uh, field, but if I can help you with a lot of your basic questions about sewing, tailoring, uh, flat pattern, draping, uh, those are my uh, forte areas as I call them. If you want specific training uh, uh, about you know how to maybe uh, beat a gown and all that, that that's impossible to do in a sort of a, a Dear Sally type of uh, session. It's most, with that type of thing, someone really needs to sit down and show you how to actually how to actually start the process from uh, from um, getting beads to, to the finished uh, item. So, but if you could, you know, shoot me your questions about any pressing issues you may have in the sewing process, in the construction process, and the uh, tailoring. Uh, I will be happy to answer all those and anything to do with pattern making and draping a garment, draping a pattern on a dress form or actually making a pattern on, on the flat paper, I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Uh, if it's out of my league and, and it's not something that is in my, um, it's in my realm to answer, then I will do my best to refer you to some of my resources out there that could help you. Um, and that can be from reading books to YouTube videos. So, uh, so focus your questions on mostly the you know your foundation issues. If you have some fitting issues, I'd be happy to answer those too because I know that that's always a big one with the sewing it, it, with the sewing industry and sewing professionals, which you are out there. You're all sewing professionals. Is you know how to fit a garment. Um, and things like that, dart locations, uh, waistline seams, and all that. I can I can certainly help you with most of those questions. Again, if there's anything that I can help you, I will do my best to refer you to an, another source, um, other resources that may be out there that could help you out. And if the resource may be that you may have to take a class, I'm going to be honest about it and tell you to do that too. I want to introduce you first to the marking tools that we use in the, in the uh, fashion world or the sewing world or whatever, um, and it's important. And yet we're in a day where anyone just picks up anything and just sews it, hems are just flipped up and that's it, but it's important to keep proper hem depths and seam allowances and things like that. So you're going to have to learn to use a, a various rulers. This is more of a professional sewing ruler. Uh, which has the inches and all that marked on there. You can see through it. We have, this is a basic, as I call it, a little bit longer than a grammar school type of ruler, but any type of ruler will do. Um, great to measure uh, wider widths and, or longer widths. And then for smaller areas, we could use, I guess, a smaller type of, of ruler. And, and it's important because things need to be measured. I, I often see the sewers or beginning sewers just flipping up hemlines and just sewing, but you need to measure a hemline to make sure that it's even, two inches, one inches, one inch all the way around. If it's a straight skirt, it's usually one to two inches of depth. If it's a flared skirt, you want to keep your hemlines hem depth a little bit narrower, like a half an inch, and, and then if you're working with knits, even more narrower than that. But you need to learn to measure because uh, you can't do it freehand. Uh, so these are important. And the, uh, unfortunately, some of the things I've seen while teaching after teaching for 40 years is a lot of 
students do not know how to read a ruler. If you don't know how to read a ruler, then become proficient in that. Look at some YouTube uh, videos and things like that because you need to understand what's a quarter inch, an eighth inch, a half an inch, a sixteenth of an inch. It's simple math and all of those are important. So that's, that's the first thing. Hold on to your grammar school rulers or buy a professional ruler where you can see through it. Uh, measuring tapes are important to measure circumferences of the body if you have to measure your hips or bust line and then transfer that to a pattern. So it's important to have a, a, a nice measuring tape. Plastic one is better than some of the paper ones. The paper ones will fall apart. Uh, again, there's, it's marked with inches, eighth of an inch and all that. And, you, and as long as you know how to read a ruler, you'll be able to read the measuring tape. So that's important. Um, so. I just, you know, you can kind of get the wrinkles out of it and hang it up and uh, just let it, uh, just uh, have it handy in case you, you need it to, to uh, measure your own body or somebody else's, a client's body and transfer those measurements again to your paper pattern for whatever other areas that where you need some bend to measure. Items. So that's a little bit about our measuring tools. Um, eventually, um, we will, as we get into maybe the flat pattern and draping and all, there are other uh, types of measuring tools that we use. Yard, yardsticks are great for measuring uh, hemlines, especially if you're wearing, a, you're, you're sewing a dress and you need to mark that, get someone to mark the hemline for you. Uh, you put the dress on and then you measure using a yardstick from the floor up all the way around and that's the way you get a accurate hemline. Trying to do it flat on a table is not going to give you an accurate hemline, especially if you, let's say someone has a, a big hips or you know, you're a little bit bigger in the back, higher in the back and lower in the front, all that has to be measured from the floor up. And as we get into the, our videotaping of these segments, we can show a little bit more about that. So that, that's a little bit about our measuring um, tools. And as we go on, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about other tools. Okay, well today we're gonna talk a little bit about the various measuring tools that we use in the clothing construction uh, area of field. And it's, it's important because uh, to, to know how to use these tools because often um, the sewers will just sometimes, as I've seen in my years of teaching, well, they'll just flip up a hem and think that's it. But you need to measure a hem. You need to measure it all the way around. The hem depth has to stay the same, whether it's two, if you're going to use two inches, it should be two inches all the way around an inch all the way around or whatever you choose to do. If it's a straight garment, an inch to two inch depth hemline is usually preferred. If it's something that's flared, you want to keep the hemline much smaller, like a half an inch, and it depends on your fabric too, down to a quarter inch. Also, wovens and knits and things like that with flared garments do change a little bit. So you need to, um, Purchase some type of uh, measuring uh, ut uh, equipment, such as, uh, this is a professional uh, ruler that we use in the fashion industry, in the sewing industry. Um, as you can see, you can see through it, and it has the inches and everything else marked, eighth of an inch, 16, uh, rather, it has inches marked, but not 16th or whatever. There are rulers out there that have all that spelled out for you. So some grade school type of rulers are grade two. Smaller ones for um, smaller areas, longer ones for longer areas. This type of ruler, you can see right through it. So if, I, um, if I'm, if i let's say one an inch depth, I can mark it right, right here. There's little holes in here. Um, and this is what we use in the f industry. And then you can just connect the dots and get your line your hemline so it would be uh, even all the way around and that's if you wanted an inch if you wanted two inches you could just use the edge up here like that and just mark that or if you have a grade school ruler it works really uh, what you used in grammar school looks works really well if they're still around um, and some of those shorter ones have uh, the plastic ones that we used in, in grade school in the old days have the eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, all that mark. I like to use this little one 
for smaller areas it does come in handy but any of these will do uh, and in marking so you have to be consistent you have to be cons consistent in marking your you know hem lines you just can't just go ahead and flip them up and then they're all crooked your garment has to look beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside just because you can't see the hemline on the outside the hem depth doesn't mean it has you know it's not going to look good on the inside um, so that's important the other thing that's important is to have um, a measuring tape and get a plastic one when you're out there investing in a measuring tape. A plastic one will not rip or tear. There are some paper ones out there. Measuring tapes are great to measure the circumference of the body, anything where you got to go around the body. And then if you have to transfer it to your the measurement to your fabric, you can do it that way. Um, so you can measure waistlines, hip lines, anywhere where you need to get a make it to go around the contours of the body of the dress form. This is a professional dress form that's used in the industry to make patterns. It's not the type of form that is sold in regular stores. You have to um, either get it online or go to shops that do sell it. But we actually can use this form and make patterns on it. We can also, uh, by placing fabric on it, but we can also use this form to fit a garment once it is sewn and um, put together and put it on the form and then you can make adjustments to it. You can use it to uh, do hemlines. So hemlines are best done when they are on a form and by measuring the hemline from the floor up then we would just measure from here up and mark our hemline around the bottom. Or you can put the garment on uh, your uh, yourself if it's for you and get somebody to measure the garment and put pins where your hemline is going to be. That's really the best way to get an accurate hemline because if you have a little bit of a tummy, the hemline is going to go up and so that has to be sort of adjusted or if you have uh, wider hips or even if you're flat, that has to you have to really measure from the floor up to get an accurate hemline. You really can't do it, especially on flare garments, by laying the garment on a flat table and trying to put your hemline in that way. It just doesn't work. So these are some of the things, measuring tools that are important just in the sewing part of the industry. In pattern making, there's a whole different, there, some of these same tools are used, but there's also uh, other tools that are there, and those will be explained when we do the pattern making portion of our videos. Uh, this is a great little ruler, also number 17 French curve. If you have to smooth out armholes or anything like that and necklines, this is about the only type of ruler that will um, will do that. Uh, there are similar rule, rulers in the art store. If you go to an art store, but, but they're, they're not the same as this. So this is a number 17 French curve and we got this from PGM. Um, the PGM company they do sell it and it's it's not it's it's very uh, it's cheap so it's not very costly thing but it's it's a great thing to have for pattern making and even for sewing if you have to uh, change a neckline or redo an armhole and anything like that those types of areas that have some curves so these are some of the important things uh, it's they're just a very simple primitive types of um, instruments but they are a critical to producing a garment that doesn't look homemade but looks very very professional okay we're going to talk a little bit about marking tools that's the next thing after your measuring tools come some of the marking tools that we that um you should have on hand and there's a lot of marking tools out there. there's a lot of uh, pencils that, that as you mark and the, uh, the markings come off and all that so you can investigate some of that. I try to keep costs down by just using things that are um, readily available and fairly inexpensive. One of the things that I like to use, is, especially in the tailoring and sewing process, and it depends with the, with the fabrics that you use, is tailor's chalk. Taylor's chalk is very good for marking. You can't use it on silk and things like that because it's wax. So once you put, make, put a mark on something, and if you iron it, it may leave a wax stain. So, but on wools and things like that, this is a good little thing to have 
to um, to mark your seam allowances, notches, and things like that. Uh, and one of the biggest concerns is when I uh, show people about the uh, the you try to use a uh, uh, tailor shop to mark is how do I keep a sharp point? There is a little in instrument here, a little plastic thing that you can buy that does, and you can see it. it uh, it'll sharpen the edge. Just go back and forth. It'll keep a sharp edge to your tailor's chalk. If you can locate one of these on, a, on some of the online and some of the different sewing companies that sell sewing supplies, you can use a razor blade um, for that. And you just go back and be careful and cut yourself. You just go back and forth and uh, keep a sharp edge with that. I'm going to see if I can find a razor blade here. I don't think I have one handy. I thought I did. But you could even use that. So just shave it. Then you'll keep it. Uh, now keep in mind, Taylor's chalk, only use that to mark fabrics that will not leave a wax stain, like wools and things like that. Do a little sample, mark it, make sure that when you put the pressing iron on it, it doesn't leave a stain. Um, there's also black tailor's chalk. We use this mostly in pattern making or when you're doing alterations, but not to a finished garment because it will never come off. So that's one of the things that we use. Let me shake this out, get it all over the place. Uh, Simple pencils will do, but be careful again, you know, it, it, to make sure it doesn't show through. You could do very light lines if you have to mark lines, if it's necessary. Um, you, you, you know, if it's necessary to mark a seam or a particular shape or whatever, uh, you can try to use pencil, but remember it doesn't come off. There are some pencils on the market where, that you can use to mark, and you can get those at Joanne Fabrics, and the, um, Usually it'll brush right off. Your markings will brush right off. Uh, I use a lot of, uh, you know, some of these pencils, but I'll, I'll mark it very lightly where you can't see it from the other side, if I have to mark anything. Uh, usually, mostly pencils are used in the, in the actual pattern making if you have to alter the pattern and things like that. Uh, sometimes if you have to make more than one al pattern alteration to your commercial pattern when you're uh, starting to sew, you can use colored pencils. And these are simple little things you can get at places like Michael's or um, any store or online on Amazon or whatever. Keep a pencil sharpener. You want to keep a point, a nice point on your pencils as you're using them to usually to mark your patterns, but not so much to mark your fabric. Uh, as I mentioned before, to mark your fabric, uh, there are fabric pencils available on uh, and I would go to Joann's or Amazon and things like that. So uh, also, this is carbon paper that's used in the, industry, in the sewing industry to trace seams from your pattern onto the garment. And it's usually wherever you want to get a mark or whatever, and you can use a tracing wheel and it would, it'll leave a mark for you. Let me do it a little bit darker. Well, I'll do it on the white paper. Now it comes in different colors. Let's see, it'll transfer a mark. Some of these tracing papers, uh, if you're going to use tracing paper, keep it, it, it does come in handy, keep a pack around. Some of it brushes right off the fabric. Again, test your fabric with any marking utensils that you're going to use to make sure that it's not going to mar the fabric, it's not going to show through the right side of the fabric, it's not going to wash off. Or whatever you're gonna have to do a little bit of experimenting and sort of playing around with scraps of fabric and to see what works best for you so these are some of the marking tools tracing wheel. this is a tracing wheel that has serrated edge that um, you also can use it does cut through so oops it'll give you that the other one will give you more of a straighter edge. So whatever you prefer. So it's just sort of acclimating you to some of the things that are out there. There are so many 
marking tools out there, but I'm trying to keep the cost down and to work with things that maybe you have already around the house. So these are, are just important little tools. And as we get into this, we'll show you, you know, how to cut a pattern, how to transfer the pattern lines onto your fabric by using some of these tools. And so you'll get a better understanding of how to use them in this fashion design process or the sewing process. Again, it'll make a big difference between producing a garment that is just so-so and a garment that looks professional and not, you don't want it to look homemade. So, all right, the other very important thing is that you have wonderful cutting shears to cut your fabric. And there's lots of cutting shears uh, out there. Uh, Ginger makes a great, um, I don't know if I pronounced it right. Ginger make, Ginger makes a good pairs of sh uh, shears. This is uh, Mark's Knife Edge. I mean, there's lots of, I have a, a variety here. I have a, a serving platter of shears here, cutting shears. This is probably the nicest one. The 7300 high carbon stainless steel. It just cuts through anything and it's lightweight. These are the old time, old tailor shears that are probably 60, 70 years old. Uh, my mom, when she worked in the fashion design industry, and my aunts used, uh, and I just held on to them, and I love to use, I, they, they still work. Uh, so these are some of the old ones that I inherited over the years. These are pinking shears. They make a little uh, zigzag edge onto your fabric, which we used, we mostly use when uh, sometimes in linings, but not in the actual garment. Then in the old days, you would cut your seam allowances with picking shears because then they would, would, they would not ravel as much. But since we have sergers now, we don't need all that. I have a cheap pair of uh, shears that I keep on hand to cut paper, like paper patterns and things like that. So you don't want to use your shears that you use for fabric. You don't want to use them on paper. All right, that's very important. If they get a little, uh, you know, where you need to have them serviced because they're no longer cutting, a quick fix might be to take a couple layers of aluminum foil and cut through them. They will tend to sharpen your scissors, but it's not a professional, obviously, it doesn't equate to if you took them to a professional place to have them sharpened which you should do if, if they don't cut any longer. Again, keep them separate from your what you use to cut paper. That's very important. So what, um, and if you have an old pair of shears that you, or scissors that you inherited there and they cut, that's fine. You don't have to run out there and buy them. Invest, invest in a good pair if you don't have a, a, a pair handy. Like I said, these are my favorite. They're so lightweight and they cut through anything and they last forever. Um, they will have to be serviced once in a while, I'm sure, like anything else, because cutting through different layers of fabrics and patterns on top of fabric is going to make them dull. But, um, so, anyway. And there's different lengths and I love to use these big things. Now they come in different lengths. You could get 12 inches, six inches or whatever. Whatever is comfortable for you. They do have left-handed shears and right-handed. I'm right-handed, so these work fine. But if you're not right-handed, there are left, these are left-handed shears. Um, some of my students, I can't use them because I'm not left-handed, but the, you know, some of my students over the years left them behind. I'm still holding this pair. I know who it belongs to, but I haven't been able to locate the person in about 30 years. So, and I'm not left-handed. I saved it for a figure one day she's going to show up. Uh, so anyway, so those, some of these things are extremely important. You have to have a good pair of cutting shears because you're cutting is uh, one half of your sewing prop. I, I'd say it's not quite one half, but anyway, cutting is uh, the important part of, of garment, uh, uh, the garment construction process, the cutting phase, the um, sewing phase, and then you have the pressing phase, which we'll talk about later on. So, 
Anyway, so these are shorter ones if you feel more comfortable. I'm used to using these big things, these very long things I feel lost, but there are times when in smaller areas I have to resort to smaller scissors, and these are embroidery scissors. Sometimes I'm, if I have to get into smaller areas, I, I use those. Um, so whatever is, again, whatever is comfortable for you as long as they cut. Now when you're cutting, and I will show more about cutting when we actually get into actually showing how to cut a pattern, is remember to, if you're right-handed, have most of the fabric towards your left-hand side, because if you're right-handed and you're trying to, you know, cut like this, you can end up cutting your fingers. So remember that when you're cutting is to have most of the fabric to the opposite, opposite side of where you're cutting. So if I was, since I'm right-handed, it's going to be on the left. If you were uh, left-handed, it would be on this side. So, you know, when you're cutting, try not to stop and start. That's when you end up being crooked like that. So take a deep breath and use the tip of your uh the cutting shears and and take your time and you'll get a straight line so see how I'm using the tip of my shoe not in, not the whole thing that's when you end up going crooked okay try, and just try to use the tip and practice you may have when I started in the industry the gentleman that hired me just made me sew straight lines and made me cut straight lines for about a month um, until I was about ready to lose my mind but it, I under you know it worked now that's the traditional one so, so take, as I call it, little bites instead of doing. And if you, you know, try not to stop and start. If you have to rip something, if it's a woven fabric, which means it doesn't stretch, this is a woven, this is, this is a woven fabric. And this is a stretch. Woven fabrics, if you have to just cut a straight line, you could just nip them and go like that, and it'll give you a straight line. But if you're cutting curves and things like that, forget, you have to do it. So you have to do it with the, with the scissors. All right. So that's, that's very important that you learn to cut straight. And if you have to practice, practice. Um, you don't want crooked lines and uh, things like that in, in, the, you know, in, your, sew, in your cutting process. Uh, again, as we get into, uh, we'll lay a, you know, put a pattern down on top of fabric and we'll actually demonstrate how to cut an actual pattern. Uh, these are pinking shears. Okay. Uh, they're great actually if you're lining a garment and we in the industry we used to use we actually had a pinking machine that would pink the edges of the of the lining fabric and then we it was never surged so they do a little zigzag thing like that it's not recommended you use them on your what we call this like a fashion fabric but it's it's good if you want to pink any areas of your lining so that the seams don't ravel. Okay, it keeps this, you know, see how a, the straight edge, your seams will really, really ravel. And in a, a pink edge, you won't get that. Uh, we don't recommend that you pink the edges of the actual fashion fabric because it, the edges can show on the right side of the garment, but if they don't show, that's fine, but we, in, um, in the fashion industry, we would just paint the lining and then the lining would be sewn at the bottom to the garment and we didn't bother to serge anything. Anything that's lined, we used, and it had what was called a closed bottom where the lining was closed at the bottom. We never searched any of the seams. You gotta, serging is a finish that um, is applied to raw seams so that they don't ravel. Uh, and if a garment is going to be lined, you really don't need to serge it. Serging adds a little bit of a thickness uh, to a garment. And I'm going to take you over to the serging machines, machine and show you what a serged edge looks like in case you just don't know what it looks like. Okay, so if we wanted to stop our edge from raveling, 
um, in the after you cut the garment, you would serge the edges. You don't serge after you sew, which I see a lot of home sewers do. You don't do that in the industry. After you cut a garment, that's when you would do any serge. And so it leaves that kind of an edge to it so that it, your fabric does not ravel. Now it's much easier to, uh, to serge after you have cut the garment, not after you have sewn the garment. And it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> it off with your these are little clippers we use in the industry great for clipping threads and it would be kind of nice uh, get yourself a pair of these they're fairly inexpensive they have better ones out there um, a little bit more pricier these are more like you know once they get a little rusty and they don't clip anymore you just toss them out um, but these come in handy when you're sewing when you're clipping when you have to clip sometimes you have to clip seams on curved edges and you can just use a, these little clippers for that, uh, things like that. So they do come in handy and they're not that expensive. So you will need um, these too. Uh, so that's a little bit about what a surged edge is, just in case you don't know what a surged edge is. Uh, again, as we get into the, to the cutting process, I can show you how to surge edges on a garment that's already cut. Right now we're just getting through to the preliminaries. Okay, more tools of the trade, audience. <laughs> so, this is a seam ripper. You're going to need it. You'll be ripping seams for the rest of your life. I've been sewing for over 40 years, and I'm always ripping seams. It has a little blade in there, so don't cut yourself, okay? It's a powerful little tool. Again, available on uh, any uh, sewing, um, anyone that carries sewing supplies, tailoring supplies. So if you, if um, let's say you just stitched the wrong seam or you did something wrong, you just, let me see if I can get in here and show it to you really well. Yes, it's hard, a little bit hard to see. Here's the seam and you just, the blade here will rip it for you. And it can, it'll start it for you and you can, um, just be careful that you don't wreck your fabric you can go from this side or you can go from the other side and so anything that you if you made a mistake in the sewing process you rip it out so you have to learn to sew and rip that's the way it goes because you will be making mistakes forever so it's a cute little it comes in handy <laughs> um, sometimes you can use the little clippers too to clip the seams if you need to but with that, you gotta be careful because you may end up cutting the fabric because this is a little bit of a safer tool to use. Okay, the seam ripper. And these are old. There's probably newer models out there. The, this is my ancient one when I was going to design school, keeping it as a souvenir. This is when I worked in the industry, so. But we did, you know, we didn't rip too much in the industry because we had to kind of do it right the first time, but in home sewing, you're gonna be ripping a lot. And that's okay. You learn from your mistakes. So keep that in mind that these are handy tools along with the clippers. You can clip the little seams if you have to rip them. Um, this is a tweezer and it came, it, usually if you buy a serger, uh, and that's the machine I used before, it, you can, uh, it comes with it. But it's great for pulling threads and it's, uh, you can use a normal uh, tweezer, you don't have to use, this is the one we use in the fashion industry, but if you had to pick any stitches that, that you ripped, you could just, you know, pick them out with the, let me find out, find where I, I did such a great job at, um, so, you know, if I wanted to pull any, see that, can you see that? So, uh, those are the broken uh, uh, thread. Once you rip a seam, you want to get rid of the stitches. So, a tweezer may come in handy if you can't do it. Or use your fingernails, but this comes in handy. It also comes in handy when you're threading a machine, the sewing machine, you can pull the thread with this with a pair of tweezers. So, these do come in handy. Um, 
like I said, you can get this is from the fast, actual fashion industry one, but you know, tweezer that you tweeze your eyebrows with works fine too. So those are some of the other things. You're gonna need sewing needles. This is an old spool of thread, probably about 60 years old. You're gonna need sewing needles. We're gonna learn to baste. And when you're a beginning sewer, it might be a good idea to, to baste and then sew your garment because it gives you much more control, it holds your seams together, and you get a better product in the end. So you need a package of different size needles, which would be good for hand sewing. This is basting thread. It comes in smaller spools than this. These are the bigger spools. It looks like thread for the surging machine but it's, it's old, good old fashioned basting thread. And any white cotton thread is good for basting and basting just holds your seams together and other areas that you're sewing together. And then you go and take it to the machine, you sew it and then you remove your sewing, your basting thread. And that's good to do in the beginning, but, but even uh, professional sewers, especially if they're working with heavy duty fabrics or fabrics that move a lot, We'll, we'll baste garments together and we do it a lot in the tailoring industry and couture, high fashion and all that. So, so uh, as we get into the, our different videos, we get later on to the segment, I will show you how to use basting thread. Um, your needles are going to come in handy if you're going to do a hand sewn hem, which is usually beautiful in most garments instead of a machine hem uh, that makes takes your garment from ready to wear to more couture, more high fashion. So those are important. So you will need some of these um, hand sewing needles. You will need thread that will go coordinate. Usually the white thread, if you can't find right, plain old basting thread, you can use any old white thread. Um, this is Guterman thread, Coates and Clarks makes thread. There's a lot of good companies out there. Um, the thread should coordinate with your garment. And this is just for use in the sewing machine. It's not to be used when you're surging the edges of a garment. Um, good quality thread will last through washings and wearings and things like that. And you, you really do need a, a good sturdy thread to hold the seams together. A lot of the thread, sometimes I go into sewing stores and I'll see, you know, five spools for a dollar or something crazy like that, or three dollars. And I, you know, it's, it's sort of inferior thread. When it goes through the sewing machine, it will start peeling and then you'll get a lot of broken stitches, not such nice looking stitches uh, in your garment and things like that. So invest in, it, thread is not cheap, but invest in a good quality thread. It does last for a while. I love to use Guterman. It's all purpose. You can use it in, usually on synthetics, uh, uh, knits and woven fabrics and, and things like that. So make sure you invest in some good thread that color coordinates with your fabric. So that's very important too. Okay. And one of the last things I don't want to forget about, you need pins. This is a magnetic pin cushion. So you will need a pin cushion and some good size, nice size pins. There's a, now pins, there are some thinner pins like that for finer fabrics. And then we have a little bit of thicker pins. You, you can get thicker pins for heavyweight fabrics. This one's a little bit thicker for heavier fabrics of wools, coat weight fabrics and things like that. That's, you don't wanna use a thick pin on a very fine fabric. You wanna use a more of a thinner pin. So you need a nice box of pins and um, you can buy them, buy the small box, big box. You can go to professional sewing stores online and get them by the pound. Here's a, uh, some that like what we used in the fashion industry and then I just pull them out and I put them in my magnetic holder. You're gonna need pins, that's crucial. All of these things that I've talked about uh, in this segment, you will, you definitely will need. And as we go on, if there's other things that I've left out, I will introduce you to those items too. But these are the basics that you need to, to be able to take a sewing class or start a sewing project. Um, 
and then there as you go on you can build on your supplies and most of these will last forever like a good pair of scissors ruler good rulers marking items will will last you forever you know it's it's an investment that you make maybe once and and that's it or unless you step on them or crush them or do something then you'd have to replace them but you do need some tools of the trade in order to enroll in a class take a class or if you're going to do it yourself teach yourself how to sew these are some of the things that you need in the in the um sewing industry in the fashion industry